Hi, thanks for joining me. Today I'm going to be going over problem one from week four of the Invariant Summer Puzzle Competition. As always, I'll leave a link in the description below to the Facebook page of the Invariants where you can find out more details about the competition. Anyway, this is problem one and it's in fact split into two parts, part one and part two. In this video, I'll go over part one and in the next one, I'm going to be going over part two. I haven't written out the problem in full because it is quite lengthy. So to see a full statement of the problem, check out the description. Anyway, this is kind of what we have, a summary of the problem. We have n lily pads, where n is a positive integer at least 2. And we also have n frogs, labelled 1, 2, 3, all the way up to n. And initially we place all the frogs on its, uh, sort of on a unique lily pad. So n lily pads, n frogs, we place each frog on its own lily pad. Okay, now only some pairs of, pads, uh, of lily pads are close enough to each other to be jumped between. Okay, and I've written in brackets forming a tree graph. So you may have noticed up here I've got a graph and this graph is what's known as a tree. So a tree is simply a connected graph which has no cycles. And now I claim that the, or sort of a statement of the problem is uh, that the sum of the lily pads are close enough to be jumped between forming a tree graph. So if you think of these vertices here as lily pads and the edges as kind of, we're allowed to jump between those uh, uh, lily pads. So for example, if this is a lily pad and this is a lily pad, because there's an edge between them, that means that these lily pads are close enough so we can jump between them. However, there's no edge between, say, this lily pad and this lily pad, uh, between this vertex and this vertex, sorry. So that means we can't jump from that lily pad to that lily pad. So hopefully that all makes sense. Okay, every second after the frogs are initially placed, they simultaneously jump to a, 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 another lily pad with frog i choosing the unique pad closest to frog i plus one. So I've written closest in inverted commas, and I'm gonna explain what that means right now. Uh, because we have a tree graph, a property of tree graphs is that if you take any two vertices, there is a unique path between them. So a path is what you expect it to be, and if you've not seen paths before, you're not allowed to have cycles. So for example, if you have this um, vertex here, and this vertex here, there's a unique path between them, namely this guy here. Okay, and because you're not allowed to repeat edges, you can't have, say, that guy there, that doesn't count. So there is a unique path from there, 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 and there. So when we say frog i moves to the lily pad closest to frog i plus one, so suppose that frog i is on this vertex here, and frog i plus one is on this vertex here. We look at this unique path here, so then at that sort of uh, every second move, i will move to this guy here, and i plus one may move somewhere else. So wherever frog i plus two is, say i plus two is there, then frog i plus one will move there in that same second where frog i moves there. Hopefully that will make sense. And of course, this i, i plus one stuff is working mod n because frog n is going to kind of chase frog one, frog one chases frog two, frog two chases frog three, and so on. So every second, they all simultaneously jump to the lily pad that is closest to the frog that they are chasing. Cool. I hope that makes sense. And this closest stuff is well defined by properties of tree graphs. Anyway, the problem we have, or the thing we want to solve, part one, is we want to prove that the frogs will never all be on the same lily pad. Okay, I hope that has all made sense. If you want to perhaps have a moment to digest that or read it again in full, check out the statement of the problem in the description. But anyway, if you want to have a go at the problem, pause the video now and give it a go for yourself, and I'm going to jump straight into a solution. <laughs> Okay, so the solution to this problem is surprisingly short, but very elegant. What I've done is I've drawn on kind of a particular tree graph, and this would represent, you know, a particular case of the lily pads and being able to jump between the lily pads, but everything I'm about to say holds for any kind of setup of your tree graph. Firstly, what we're going to do is expose a property of tree graphs in that we can use this alternate colouring scheme on them. What do I mean by that? Well, we're going to pick any vertex in our graph, so say this one here, and what we're going to do is colour it in blue, like so, and then look at all the blue neighbors and color them in green. So we have this guy being a neighbor, this guy being a neighbor, this guy being a neighbor, and this guy being a neighbor. We're gonna color them all in green, like so. Then we're gonna look at all the green neighbors and color them in blue. So this is a, blue, a, gr a green neighbor, this is a green neighbor, this is a green neighbor, and this is a green neighbor. So we're gonna color them all in blue, like so. And we continue this alternating pattern. So if there are more vertices in our graph, we colour the neighbours of blue green and then colour all the green neighbours blue and so on until we colour all the vertices in our graph. But this is kind of where we stop in our particular case. Anyway, obviously this represents the lily pads and being able to jump between uh, from uh, one lily pad to another. Now I claim that at any given time there's always going to be at least one frog on a blue lily pad and at least one frog on a green lily pad. And notice that once we can prove that claim that will also solve our problem because 
our problem is to prove that there's no point at which all frogs are on the same lily pad, but if we can prove that there's always one on blue and one on green, that will solve our problem. Now, how are we going to prove this? Well, we're going to prove it by induction on time, because uh, we start off when t equals zero, so when t equals zero, all the frogs are on kind of their own lily pad, and because there are at least two frogs and at least two lily pads, there'll always be one frog on blue and one frog on green, so that's fine in the case t equals zero, but what we're going to do is assume it holds true for t the time k minus one, and then prove that it also holds true for time k, and then our claim will be proved by induction. So at time k equals uh, t equals k minus one, we have at least one frog, at least one frog on a blue lily pad, and at least one frog on a green lily pad. Now, what we're going to do is consider when all all of the frogs jump simultaneously at time t equals k. What happens? Well, because there's at least one frog on blue, that means there's at least one frog on a blue lily pad who is chasing a frog that is currently on a green lily pad. And by currently, I mean sort of at time k minus one, just before they make their jump at time k. Now, why is that true? Well, suppose, because there's at least one frog on a blue lily pad, just choose one, call it frog i. So frog i is on a blue lily pad. Now, if frog i is not chasing a frog on a green lily pad, then it must be chasing a frog on a blue lily pad, namely i plus one is on a blue lily pad. But then if i plus one is on a blue lily pad, we repeat the process. Well, is i plus one chasing, well, i plus one, sorry, will be chasing i plus two, and if i plus two is on a green lily pad, then fine, we find a frog which is on a blue lily pad chasing a green, but if frog i plus one is chasing i plus two and i plus two is on a blue lily pad, then we look at i plus two and we repeat the process. So i plus two is chasing i plus three, and if i plus three is on a green lily pad, then great, we're done. And you know, this process continues, but because there's at least one frog on green, that means that there must be at least one blue frog chasing a green by that process I just said. You find one blue, and if it's not chasing a green, it must be chasing a blue, then we look at that next blue, and if it's not chasing a green, it must be chasing a blue, so if it's not chasing, then we look at the next blue, and if it's not chasing a green, it must be chasing a blue, and the process continues, but because there's at least one frog on green, then you must, this process must terminate, and you must be able to find a frog on blue chasing a frog on green, and similarly, kind of the exact same thing, but with green now, there must be at least one frog on green chasing a, blo a frog on blue. So at so at t, time t equals k minus one, we can find a frog, let's call it uh, frog one, or, sorry, not frog one, frog i, there exists i such that i is on blue, and i plus one is on green. And similarly, there exists j such that j is on green and j plus one is on blue and then of course then when you know t equals k so on the kth kind of second when they will jump again i will move on to a green lily pad so from a blue onto a green and j will move from a green onto a blue so then that means after time t equals k just before k plus one i guess uh, you'll have i on a green and j on a blue and hence you'll have at least one on a blue and at least one on a green and that pr proves our claim by induction. So what we've done is we've shown by induction that at any point there's always going to be at least one frog on blue and at least one on green, hence they can never all be at the same, uh, so they can never all be on the same lily pad. I hope that's all made sense and do join me in the next video where I'll go over part two. Anyway, thanks for watching, I'll catch you in the next one, have a great day.